In my last video, I showed you how to convert Celsius into Fahrenheit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it the opposite way around, convert Fahrenheit into Celsius. So the standard formula for this is Celsius is equal to your degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 and then multiply that answer by 5 and divide by 9 or multiply by 5 ninths. And an example of that is 86 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 will get you 54 times 5 is 270 divided by 9 will get you your final answer at 30 degrees Celsius. Well, that formula is a little bit much for a lot of people to do in your head. I'm going to show you a shortcut method that will allow you to be very, very accurate. It's an approximation for most of them, but will keep you within about a half degree in a wide range of Fahrenheit degrees. So the first shortcut that I'm going to show you is something that a lot of people teach and it's really easy. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your degrees Fahrenheit and you want to subtract 30 from that number. That will leave us with 20 and then we take that answer and we divide it by 2 and that gets us 10 degrees Celsius. Now this works perfectly at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The problem with this shortcut is that as you get either higher or lower uh, than 50, depending on how far away from 50 degrees Fahrenheit you are, as your starting point, it will start to get off more and more and more. So I'm going to show you an adjustment that you can make to this that will keep it accurate to within a half a degree, going from a range of about 100 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to about 200 degrees. Or negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, all the way up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So a range of about 300 degrees, and this shortcut method will be fairly accurate. So we're going to start off with 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to start this pretty much the same way that other shortcut starts. So the first thing we want to do is subtract 30 from this number to give us 47. Now remember I told you that that method was perfect at 50 degrees, so we're going to use that as a baseline. Now the difference between 50 to get to 77 is 27 degrees. We're going to take that number, we're going to go back one decimal place to make it 2.7. Now from there, we're going to round that up to 3. Now because uh, this number goes up, we're going to put that as positive. If it went the other way, if it was less than 50, then we would make it negative. We would subtract it from this answer. So we're going to take 3 and add it to this answer, which is 50, and now we'll divide it by 2, and that gets us 25 degrees Celsius, which is actually the perfect conversion for this particular uh, uh, for this particular temperature. So if we just did the regular method where we took uh, it would be 47 and then divide that by 2, that will actually be 20 it'd be 23.5 degrees. So you can see that we are already off by one and a half degrees and we're only 27 degrees away from 50. The next one that we're going to work out is negative 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So just like before, we'll subtract 30, which will make this negative 44. Now the difference between 50 and negative 14 is minus 64 degrees. We'll move that over one decimal place. That becomes negative 6.4. We're going to round it down to negative 7. So negative 7 or negative 44 minus 7 is going to be negative 51. And when we divide that by 2, our answer will be negative 25.5 degrees Celsius. Now, the true conversion of this is actually negative 25.55 repeating degrees Celsius. So this one stays a lot closer. Now, if we just took the negative 44 and we divided that, we would end up with negative 22 in the first shortcut method. And you could see we would already be off about three and a half degrees already. And we're, we're really not that far away from 50. Now we're going to do the uh, freezing and the boiling point of water. So first one, 32. We subtract 30. That leaves us with 2. The difference between 32 and 50 is negative 18, minus 18. So it's negative 1.8. We're going to subtract it by going rounding down to negative 2. That leaves us with 0. 0 divided by 2 is still 0, and that gives us 0 degrees Celsius, the freezing point of water. Now when we go up, this is going to be off by about a half degree. So we start with the boiling point of water, which is in Fahrenheit is 212 degrees. That becomes 186 after we subtract 30 from it. Excuse me, 182, I apologize. 182 after we subtract 30 from it. 
then the difference between 50 and 212 is going to be 162. So we'll move that back. It'll be 16.2. We'll round that up to 17. And we're going to add 17 to this number, which will make it 199. Divide that by 2, and that becomes 99.5 degrees Celsius, which we all know is off by a half degree. As you start getting beyond about 220, it starts to get off worse and worse, but it has a pretty good range, like I mentioned before, in between that negative 100 Fahrenheit up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, the last three examples, I've written down their degrees in Fahrenheit as well as their conversions into Celsius. And if you want to pause the video and give this a shot in your head, see if you come up with the correct answers. So the first one, we start out with negative 40. We subtract another 30. That becomes negative 70. The difference between negative 40 and 50 is 90 or minus 90. So we're going to subtract 9 from that. That gives us negative 79. And then when we divide that number by 2, we end up with negative 39.5 degrees Celsius. So we're within 0.5 at negative 40. 25 degrees, we start off, it's going to be negative 5. The difference between 25 and 50 is negative 25. That becomes negative 2.5. We're going to round that down to negative 3. It becomes negative 8 divided by 2, and that becomes negative four degrees Celsius. We're off by 0.12 degrees. Finally, the last one, we start out at 94. We subtract 30 from that. That starts out at 64. The difference between 94 and 50 is 44. We're going to round that up to five. So this becomes 69 divided by two will be 34.5 degrees Celsius. So this method is not perfect, but it is a good shortcut method within a wide range of degrees, Fahrenheit degrees, that will get you a very accurate conversion. Now, I realize that uh, most of the world runs on Celsius, and so this is a much more useful conversion than the first one that is really just for Americans. So I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. I hope you can find this useful, and I'll see you in the next one.